Welcome to Life with the Spectrum. I'm your host, Gina Cavalli. Let me ask you a question. What's your typical routine like in the morning? For you and I, get up, make coffee, let the dog out, feed the dog, get the kids ready for breakfast, and out the door you go. So for us, we take for granted how easy that routine is because we do it over and over again. And chances are we could do it in our sleep or blindfolded. But think about it for just a second. Elderly people maybe getting the diagnosis of dementia or young children and young adults with cognitive impairments. That routine is so hard to follow and you forget the steps. Even the most neurotypical person can forget those steps in your routine, which is why I was so lucky to find this guy. This guy made an app that everybody's gonna use. Welcome to the show, Matt Golden, the CEO, CEO and co-founder of Map Habit. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing great, thanks for having me on. I'm very excited to have you on, Matt, because I really do believe that you kind of struck gold with this new app. Tell me about Map Habit and how it came to be. Sure. Yeah. So thank you. We uh, we started Map Habit in March of 2018. So we're about five years in. Uh, both myself and my my co-founder, who uh, both lived on the same block in uh, in Decatur, Georgia, he was walking his dog one day, and uh, we lived basically in the same neighborhood for a while. And I just decided, all right, I'll I'll talk to him for the first time in a long time. Uh, so we we ended up striking uh, striking a great conversation. I was really plateauing at my corporate financial planning and analysis job, uh, consulting at the Coca Cola company, and he has already dedicated his life to understanding brain science and, and how it changes over time, especially with uh, neurodegenerative diseases. So, uh, you know, we just started uh, realizing we have a lot in common and we have very complementary uh, skill sets where I bring a lot of the business and, you know, IT and, and, and people management fundraising skills to the table. And he has a wealth of healthcare and, and clinical research knowledge. So, we uh, we decided that it was time to, to join forces, and uh, that's how Matt Papet was born about five years ago. I don't think there's another app quite like this out on the market today. And there's an app for everything, <laughs> it would appear. Correct. Yeah, there, there's a lot of habit building of apps and, and scheduling apps, but how we're different is because it's neuroscience based, we've gotten about six and a half million dollars of funding from the National Institutes of Health, is that Stuart and I discovered a second memory system of the brain that can be used to help build habits or routines. This is called the, the habit system. And what Map Habit does uh, is, is basically allows a family or, or an individual to sequence together pictures, audio, and video into step-by-steps so that they can build habits and routines tapping into this non-conscious memory, which is the habit system. Uh, the habit system is different than your everyday memory system, which you use for consciously recalling facts and information. Who's the first president of the United States? Uh, what did I have for dinner last night? A lot of times when you have a neurodegenerative uh, condition, you know, those can be tough questions. But what isn't as hard is is really developing habits and routines using your non-conscious memory. And that's basically what Map Habit does by sequencing, like I mentioned, pictures, audio, and video for making coffee. You gave that great example earlier. It may really just be four or five different steps where you take a picture of your your um, your coffee mug and, and basically have your coffee grinds and your filter put it all together in, in order, put in water, and, and basically those five steps, because you're repeating them and seeing them over and over, you develop this non-conscious memory that we've proven in numerous uh, research studies that it actually works to, to build and develop habits and routines. When my son was first starting ABA therapy, that's what they did. They gave him a lot of uh, visual clues on just how to brush his teeth. Okay, so you go to the sink, you get your toothbrush. I mean, there were literally step-by-step -step pictures. And, you know, I mean, he's a quick learn, right? But still, it took him a couple of days, and he did that every single morning. And we moved. We did it on little pieces of paper, and we moved it off the Velcro as to check it off that it was done. Before you know it, he had mastered that skill, and he was on to something else. I like that this app helps when you forget or you 
are so kind of absent-minded because your mind is going a million miles an hour for uh, folks with other diagnoses, you know, that, that you kind of need this to slow them down and bring them back. Like, no, wait, did you remember to put on deodorant, honey? You can't leave the house without it. Yeah, applied behavioral analysis is, is so powerful. And we didn't really know a lot about it at the time because we had mainly focused on older adults with dementia and figured adapting mind mapping, which is similar in visual scheduling or visual modeling in that it takes a, a central theme and has different branches that go off of that theme with related concepts. Um, but ABA is, is amazing because uh, using visual cues, having a video and peer modeling are, are very common. And, and to be able to leverage what's called graduated exposure, where especially when you have a, a tough or maybe intimidating activity like going to the dentist with all sorts of smells and sounds and, and scary equipment, you can really through basically through working your way up to it, uh, you know, going to yeah. the doctor's office, maybe meeting some people, um, going back another time and, and sitting in a chair, going back again and, and basically going through that motion, you can kind of desensitize the whole experience. And that's the beautiful part of ABA therapy. It just it bolts on very well to to what we're doing. When we get back with Matt Golden, the co-founder and CEO of Map Habit, we're going to find out how does this actual app affect the families, the individuals, and the caregivers. Stay with me. I'm Lyra Gilmore. Thanks for checking out this episode of Life with the Spectrum. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll always see the newest episodes when they come out. Welcome back to Life with the Spectrum. I'm Gina Cavalli. With me today, Matt Golden, the co-founder and CEO of Map Habit, this new app that's going to really take the world by storm, if it hasn't already. Now, you mentioned that individuals and families can use this, also caregivers, outside caregivers. How do they all work in tandem together, Matt? I I'm a little unsure of how that works, and I'm sure our viewers would like to know. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So it's it's always centered around the the individual who is using it for building habits and routines. We really span the life lifespan anywhere from a young child as as early as four or five years old, uh, who you know needs that for additional cognitive support to an older adult uh, who may be in their eighties who is really struggling to remember you know different aspects of their routine. So uh, we typically will start with at least with the uh the the younger uh children or a generation is we'll, we'll work with them and, and their primary uh, caregiver, usually a family member. Uh, we could also be working directly with a case manager who has, you know, an individual who has an individual service plan uh, where they have certain activities of daily living or life skills that they want to improve. And they may either be on the wait list for a waiver or a wait list for services. The great part about Map Habit is we can we can start you uh, very quickly, and uh, we incorporate the entire circle of support, like you mentioned. So while we may be centering around that individual's uh, key skills that they're trying to develop, depending on what you know age they are and what uh, stage of life that they're in, sure. uh, we will also utilize uh, the entire support circle, which can be a family member, it could be a school teacher, it could be their their ABA or RBT, it could also be uh, you know other types of therapy. Or, or, or friends that are in, in their lifestyle. So they can log on and view or add, change, and implement some new tasks and skills or add to their existing, like, this is the routine. Oh, wait, you know, you got to let the dog out and then feed the dog, right? <laughs> so they can add another additional step into that on the app. Sure. Yeah, it could be additional steps. It could be videos uh, of encouragement from a family member across Aww. you know the country. Uh, it could be a variety of things. And we we know that security and privacy is very important. So these support mm. members are uh, controlled by the the primary uh, uh, you know family member who is signing up for the service on behalf of their their loved one. And we can control what they see or what they can't see. Uh, but yeah, to include as many people in their lives that are really supporting them throughout their, uh, you know, their daily lives, that's, that's an advantage of what we do. I think that's great too for 
people suffering with dementia. They can get these encouraging, you know, little videos from their daughter who may not live there or their son who's overseas serving um, our country or uh, their next door neighbor who just wants to pop in and, you know, say, hey, I saw you go get the mail yesterday or something like that. I love this. Matt Golden, the CEO and co-founder of Map Habit. Stay with me, Matt. I need to find out where this is available, how can people get it, and if there's costs involved. Hold on. Hi. I'm Lear Gilmore's. Thanks to our friends at Welcome back to Life with the Spectrum. I'm your host, Gina Cavalli. Sitting with me today, Matt Golden, the CEO and co-founder of Map Habit. This new app, and there seems to be an app for everything, but this one I especially like because for folks that have cognitive impairments, young adults, children, uh, and of course, our elderly who are suffering with dementia, this app is really a game changer. Matt. I'm so happy to talk to you today because I think this is just going to take Georgia by storm. So where is this? Where can people get it? How much does it cost? What, what are we looking at? Sure. Well, the Map Habit system really is a combination of behavioral health coaching and, and consulting in addition to a digital health platform that we um, can download from the App Store, just like other apps. But uh, right now, it is mostly available through the waiver program and through individual subscriptions. Uh, you can go to our website, www.maphabit.com, and, uh, and basically hit a, uh, a contact us uh, to get access access to it as an individual uh, customer. But um, we are covered under the waiver program in six states right now, and we're growing um, additional states every day. Uh, in that specific example, you would reach out to your case manager and, and mention that this intervention might be a good complement to your already uh, existing services. It's not a remote patient monitoring. It does not replace what you already have. It'll just supplement and enhance the care delivery um, and the independence for the entire support circle. So um, when you go through basically this referral process for your case manager, you'll be uh, hopefully approved for the, the service pretty quickly. And then we usually start with a an initial needs assessment. We look over and, and talk about your individual service plan, identify different areas where either the existing content or personalized content by basically taking pictures, audio and video of yourself doing a task uh, would be better beneficial because you can't say I can't if you can actually see yourself doing it. And that's really the, the power of the differentiator. <laughs> so um, that's huge because yeah. everybody is so quick to say I can't do it. <laughs> exactly. So as long as you've, um, you know, you've seen yourself once or there's someone uh, that has, is, you know, similar to you uh, or maybe a peer um, that's modeling it for you, then it's a lot easier to accomplish the task. But uh, in, in general, since it does incorporate both the app and a coaching model, uh, it's $50 per month. You get a half hour consultation with someone from our team every month. Uh, you have access to the app, not only for the self-advocate or the individual, but the entire support circle, unlimited number of people. And um, we really do focus on on privacy and security and, uh, and really uh, outcomes. So we are... We're excited about uh, bringing on more people. And that $50 is then covered through Medicare or Medicaid. What six states currently have this? Yes, so we are in Missouri, Illinois, uh, California, Alabama, Oklahoma and Tennessee were in, in the final phases. Uh, but yeah, by the time this airs, we should uh, have everything uh, wrapped up there. Uh, Georgia is not too far along. We are anxiously awaiting for their policies to be um, in place so that they open it up for providers. It's been approved for CMS. So um, once Georgia goes, uh, I know for myself personally living in Atlanta, that's going to be a huge push for us <laughs> to get this in more people's hands. So I want to ask you, how can we help get this pushed through? Because I know people right now, this very second in my brain, I'm thinking of all of the people I know that this could help that are on Medicare, that are on Medicaid. So how can we help you? That's a great question. Uh, sometimes it's uh, <laughs> it's getting in front of the right people who can uh, who who can get the the, the policies uh, actually written and and the provider uh, onboarding happen. I'm 
not as involved with that piece, especially on the Medicaid waiver side. Um, on the Medicare side, there really needs to be a greater emphasis on family caregivers uh, within Congress so that it, you know, the family caregiver, in addition to the person with um, a, a listed con condition, can also get these needed supports. As you know, a caregiver is at risk to become sick themselves, and they're very not often professionally trained to do the work that they need to do to best support the, the individual. Uh, so there are a number of different initiatives that are underway now that are being discussed to provide uh, stipends, uh, regardless of income, to family caregivers uh, to have assistive technologies like Map Habit, uh, but they are not getting the right uh, attention that they that they really deserve because I think they're there's upwards of $400 billion of, of unpaid care that's done by, by a family member to someone oh. you know, with dementia or someone with an intellectual developmental disabilities. And, to, and a lot of times they have to leave work uh, either partially or fully to provide the support that they need. So definitely if someone hears this who's on Capitol Hill or even at the state level that can help, <laughs> you know, emphasize the need to support Push things you know, on. family caregivers, both on the Medicare and Medicaid level. We, we desperately need that as a country. Oh, wow. That Everybody watching right now, definitely write a letter or if you know someone, uh, even even, you know, right around the corner, you know, your local mayor or whatnot, get behind this because it sounds like I mean, it's a kind of a no brainer. This is something that people uh, could benefit from and any time to make the quality of life better for someone who is suffering is a good thing. And being a force for good, uh, for sure, is always my motto, too. Uh, stay with me, Matt, uh, here, the co-founder and CEO of Map Habit. I've got some fun questions that I want to ask you next. Welcome back to Life with the Spectrum. I'm Gina Cavalli. With me today, Matt Golden, co-founder and CEO of Map Habit, this revolutionary uh, app that I do think is just going to change and start multiplying and spreading uh, because it's so good and it's so valuable to individuals and families and caregivers and organizations that can all hop on and help people remember how to do the simplest tax tasks. What are some of the more simple tasks. And then give me some examples, Matt, of some more difficult ones that are laid out. I'd love to hear the big differences that Map Habit can actually you know, take on. Sure. So Map Habit has three main programs that are incorporated. So we have uh, basically cognitive engagement. These are things out of the box that will help you with your mind, body, and spirit. So there might be mental acuity games. There could be mindfulness exercises. There could be, you know, different kinds of things that we provide also a kit like a TheraBand or, or, or TheraPuddy, uh, fidget toys, all that can help you with your bilateral coordination and, and using your, um, your, your left or, or your right uh, dominant, non-dominant hands. Those require no customization and those are considered pretty straightforward. The other piece is education. These are, after we go through the intake process where you fill out a questionnaire and talk to one of our, our, our coaches, uh, there may be specific areas that you need to brush up on. You know, if you're an older adult with dementia, you may not understand why PTSD or what is sundowning and, and how does that affect someone. Or if you're, um, you know, younger, you may need, you know, different techniques for, you know, helping teaching someone tie their shoes or, you know, what to do when you uh, are about to start a job? What are the key things to, to remember? Those are also out of the box, but they're a little bit more specialized based on your specific situation. Uh, some of the more advanced ones is the third tenant of, of Map Habit, which is the, the habit building capability, where if you have an activity of daily living, like, you know, getting dressed or, or making your favorite meal, uh, that requires a little bit of intention to perhaps take pictures or videos or record audio for cues for people and, and break down an activity into a step by step. You know, up front, if it's your favorite meal, it may, you know, may take 10 steps on how to make a chicken quesadilla, for example, or, you know, pop popcorn, maybe a little bit less. But if you personalize it, 
in that person's home or in their work environment and make it so that the steps are the ones that they traditionally have trouble doing while there's a little bit of front end work. We've proven that if you spend that time up front just for one or two different uh, activities, you get the buy in, you see very quick results. We see people who are you know, having trouble doing activities of daily living or remembering the, their medication or the sequence in which to do that uh, within one or two times, they're able to build up that procedural memory, that habit system and do it more on their own. So um, the investment's worth it. Investment's and it worth would it. decrease the frustration about doing these tasks, right? The, the frustration, I watch my son sometimes and he gets so frustrated. And I think if it's put out there and plotted out just like that, just like Map Habit does, then it reduces the frustration, adds to the quality of life, makes it easier. And hopefully that, you know, continued, you know, doing it, this habit becomes, you know, then just memory and you can continue to do those things. You, you move on from that, you go to another skill set, or that's something that you're always going to, in the cases of dementia, might always have to use and go back to. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. The you, you want to start small, have a couple of quick wins, and then you can build from there. That's that's the best part about starting this early. Uh, if you're, you know, a child with a uh, someone who requires additional cognitive support, starting it maybe surrounded with the school system or with your therapist or with a family member and, and it, it, it'll allow you to grow into it. But even an older adult who, you know, in the dementia space, there's something called mild cognitive impairment. And sometimes you're diagnosed with that, but you don't necessarily have, you know, extreme symptoms at that time. That's actually the best time to start because you can establish these routines and get in the process of being intentional and paying attention and mapping out your your activities of daily living so that you are used to that process and then you really gain that dignity and self-respect and that autonomy to do it on your own, that that kind of methodology then carries with you. And it can then also help with consistency of care and, and handoffs to other family members as per perhaps if the disease gets even uh, you know, more, uh, more intense. I just dig this mobile app and I think you will too. Uh, Matt Golden, thank you for sitting with me today. How can people find you one more time? Sure. Yeah. The best way to do it is to go to our website, www.maphabit, M-A-P-H-A-B-I-T.com. Click contact us and we will get you all set up. And even if it's not passed in the state that you currently live in, you can still start the onboarding process because we know it's coming in Georgia. We know it's coming and we're just a few maybe weeks or months away. That means you can still get onboarded for the mobile app, correct? Absolutely. I love this. Thank you again, Matt Golden, CEO and co-founder of Map Habit. Matt and Map Habit are where it's at. Oh my gosh, I can literally think of so many people right now who could stand to benefit from this, including my dad. People with PTSD, any neurodegenerative, um, you know, thing going on, IDD. Uh, just the the possibilities are really endless, uh, not just for kids on the spectrum, but as I mentioned, all of those other diagnoses out there as well. Map Habit. It looks to be approved here in Georgia, so be looking and talking with your caseworker, especially especially if you're on Medicare or Medicaid, all right? You know, thank you so much for checking into Life with the Spectrum. I'm having fun. Not only am I learning a lot for myself and my family, but I hope that in turn, you're learning a lot for you and yours. And there's an episode that you can plug into. Uh, just about everything is listed. All you have to do is go back on the YouTube page and find an episode that might be pertinent to you and your family in the moment. As we continue to live this crazy journey called life, thanks again for checking in. Remember to like, comment, share, most of all, subscribe. And if there's somebody I need to be talking to, tell them to reach out or just email me, gene at gcast.com, and I'll reach out to them. Thanks again for tuning in to Life with the Spectrum. See ya.